All right, we're going to show you how to create uh, a little movie magic with Pixlr. Uh, we're going to take a, uh, a gloomy day like this and we're going to replace the clouds in the background to a nice sunny sky like, like this here. Um, so the first step, uh, in Pixlr you can open an image uh, to edit by just having its URL. So I'm going to copy uh, the URL there. And then since we've installed uh, Pixlr in Google Drive, and just a quick summary on how to do that to get this little Pixlr editor button here, go into your drive, click Create, connect more apps, and then search for Pixlr, P-I-X-L-R, uh, in the Chrome store and just add it to your drive from there. Uh, but I'm going to start a new uh, Pixlr image here. I can bring in one from my computer, from a URL, from another library. Uh, or start from scratch. I'm just going to open an image from URL, paste that in there from my Stormy Mountains, and Pixel will bring it right in. Um, I'm going to make the picture a little bit bigger so it's a little bit easier to work with, uh, like that, maybe a little smaller so I can see the whole thing. There we go. Um, now the first step that you always want to do when you're editing pictures, when you're making big changes, is you want to protect yourself from yourself. So in the layers here, and this is true for Photoshop as well, this background layer is going to be locked. You can't really do much with it. So what you do is click and drag and drop it on this little new layer icon. And now I have a background image and a copy of the background. And um, whatever layer I've got selected here on the right uh, is the one that I'll do the editing on. So I'm going to uh, leave the background image in place. Uh, I might be able to turn off uh, its visibility, maybe not. Uh, but I'll leave the background copy and that's the one I'm going to work on. Alright, so what we want to do next is we want to get rid of these skies. So the first way to do that, uh, you could just grab the eraser and, and start going like crazy. Uh, and that might be a good way to start, depending on the complexity of the edge that you've got to do. Um, or you need to make a selection. Uh, you can use the uh, lasso tool if you have a steady of enough hand to draw right along this, this ridge line here. Um, I don't. It would take too long, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to not do it that way. I'm going to use the uh, magic wand selector. And by doing that, if I click on an area of the sky, it will select everything similar. Uh, so you can see that I, I got the dark sky bits, but it also, it's also grabbing some of the mountain. Uh, so the way to avoid that is to lower the tolerance on this tool to maybe 10 or so. You may need to play with it a little bit, um, but that'll limit how much is selected. And then so um, that's good. It's not grabbing the mountain. If I hold down the shift key, that'll add to that selection. And I just keep adding, clicking in areas to get that selection so that the whole area is surrounded by marching ants. And that is the technical term for this. Uh, I might have the tolerance set a little too low, but I'm patient. Hopefully you are too, so you <laughs> stick with me while I make this selection. Okay. I think that's good enough for what we're doing. All right. So now I've got that, that area there. And now I just, I could do two things. I could either copy it and preserve the layer, but I don't need it. I've still got the background image. So I'm just going to come here and um, hit the delete key. And now you can see in the thumbnail that it's gone from, from the uh, foreground image, but the background is still showing through. And that's OK. So now what I need to do is I need to bring in my sky. And then I'm going to place that in a new layer to put that in between the background and the new uh, mountains in the foreground. So again, view image. I'm going to grab this URL, copy. Uh, if you're not finding the, a good size image to work with when you're doing a Google image search, under search tools you can choose image size, and so you can choose large images there. All right, back to my image, and now I'm going to go to Layer, and I'm going to say Open Image URL as a layer, since I have the, uh, the URL for the clouds there, so I do that. It brings that cloud layer in, and now my cloud layer is going to be gigantic. It's a lot bigger than my, my image, so it's covering everything up. 
Uh, I could put it now in between the background, and, and it looks like a decent sunny sky, but I'm not seeing as much of the sky as I want to. So what I can do on that layer, if I go to Edit and choose Free Transform, I, you can now see the uh, cancel. You can see the outline uh, of the original image, and now I can just stretch that down to kind of fit the size of my screen. If I hold down the Shift key, it'll do a proportional um, size change there so that I'm, uh, it doesn't distort the, uh, the image there. So let's see now how it looks. You know, I might need to lighten this up a little bit, but uh, now I've got my, my nice sunny sky in with my, my foreground image. So an easy way to, uh, to tr play tricks with photos and, uh, and uh, make the image what you want it to be. Uh, if you'll notice, if I use the little move tool, I can move that sky layer around and get it just where I want it to. I can also, again, do a free transform on that. Um, if I want to make that a little bigger, smaller, if I wanted to change the size of that sky to fit what I want it to be. Okay, uh, that's about it. Uh, you can do the same thing in Photoshop with very similar steps. Um, just experiment with the tools here in, in Pixlr and in Photoshop and, and just learn what they do by trial and error. Uh, have fun photoshopping and tricking your friends.